very different stories here, having talked to the two of them. So I want to actually spend a little bit more time on that question and have each of you talk about this very differently. Tom, you're private, local, that's what you want to stay. Bill, you took a big check, right? And you're part of a much bigger company uh, today. So yep. I have two stories I want to get both. So I, I guess I can go. Um, you know, when you know we we did our last uh, sort of expansion in a sense, it was all through um, friends and family in a sense. So my college roommate, um, you know, we were at a point where this was the 2008 area where the uh, banking was not, you know, too friendly. We had just taken a loan, we had just moved, and, you know, they were not, you know, they were just trying to work us out, you know, not, not really, you know, help us at all. And, you know, I had talked to my roommate, and he was just like, well, you know, who does entrepreneurial investing and things like that. And he also had a cousin who later became our CEO, and, you know, was really into the, um, you know, the fact that we were, you know, a business that, you know, was doing an artisanal kind of product that he was really into, you know, wanting, wanting to help us along. And um, we needed somebody with a financial mind more than anything else at that point. But it also came with, you know, we needed to get the bank out. We needed to get some, you know, a little bit of investment in it because, you know, we were using, in a sense, Microstar kegs, and we couldn't we couldn't get enough kegs. You know, things uh, which is at least keg lease, and that was a bad deal back then. You know, we're you know we're back to Microstar now because now it's a good deal. But you know, just things like that. You know, we, we were just you know getting you know beaten up from every every angle, and never able to really make make any money. So mine just came, my investment sort of came from you know people that you know knew how to financially put things down on the books, put things down on a, you know, a projection sheet, uh, P&L and all that kind of stuff, and go to a bank and say, we need money. And the bank was like, okay, you guys seem like you know what you're doing. You know, as far as like having that financial person that could really get it from them, and that's how we've been able to grow. Um, and the people that, you know, came in at that point, uh, which was, this wasn't very many, it was basically one little family, and they, you know, they're still, you know, when, when we need something and if we can't get the bank or someone like that to help us, or if the bank's not a good option at that time, then they're, they're ready, they're ready at the, uh, at the time to do that. So, and we had to do that just a couple years ago because when we built the new facility, we ended up having a lot of overruns because of labor costs that we didn't expect. Welcome to Philadelphia. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we just needed, something to get us through cash flow wise and you know they, they stepped up and you know work worked out great for us so do you uh anticipate staying private and generally local yeah we we do but we're always you know um we're always willing to talk about the opportunity of partnering with a uh you know a good local company that can complement ourselves you know it doesn't have to be in the brewing industry and I think we look more towards that, you know, that kind of a combination of like some Philly company that wants to be part of another Philly company that can really make big things happen. So, and you know, we're like like Bill was saying, our plan has changed enough that we're looking into doing more retail, maybe doing a second group up somewhere. So, which is. You know something that we're finding from our current location, which is really realistically our first real group of So, okay, Bill, what's life like uh, with a private equity fund? It's great. Discipline is a good thing. There's, there's nobody here from New England. There's nobody. <laughs> Private equity firm? There's no one at my back either. No, that's an honest answer. I'll let, me turn begin my by saying, <laughs> let me begin by saying that you know our story is actually very similar to Tom's as well. We started out as, as um, a uh, S corporation, 35 friends and family investors. That ceiling got raised to 75 just as we were about to fund the bottling mine expansion in 2002. 
And so we got up to about 56 or so, and literally friends and family, right? So if you mess this thing up, you're not going to Thanksgiving dinner at Aunt Mary's house anymore because he lost her money. So, you know, there was always a pressure to perform for someone on the financial side of our company, not only ourselves and our employees and our, our families. Um, also where it's similar is that when Tom talked about partnerships and access to capital, it was always intelligent capital. There was only someone who was bringing brains along with dollars, right? So in 2015, Anheuser Busch Impact acquired seven craft breweries in order to get to the, I guess, 13 now they have after buying CBA. Miller Coors was active that year. Um, Heineken was active that year. And for Ron and I, that was really sort of a watershed moment for us to say, like, okay, this little collegial foot, you know, little fishbowl where Tom and I like to swim, and all our friends do, and you know, now there's some sharks. There's sharks coming with some real financial capabilities that are going to change the game. And tomorrow's not going to look like yesterday because it isn't. And so, um, without any desperation, we went out to capital markets and just said, you know. Would, would you like to be involved in this? And we rapidly found uh, a partner, among others, that shared our vision of where craft beer was going, where this growth of so many breweries was going. And we played lots of many uh, well, what, if, what if scenarios with one another. And so um, when we did a deal to join Southern Tier, which was backed by PE, um, we basically knew we had a playbook as to how we were going to approach the future. So the like minds were all in agreement. I mean, and, and, and that's interesting too, right? Because you're basically now, you're the one rolling up a bunch of craft uh, breweries and you're jointly expanding into tap rooms and other hospitality industries. So, I mean, that's a different feeling, right? When you have access to all that capital. You haven't had that. Well, yeah, no, I mean, you know, it's, it's obviously it's not a mountain of capital. It's got to be very well-directed capital. Um, it's liberating to some extent, um, and we joked about, you know, the diligence and, and um, focus on results as well. Uh, it's, it's different than it was. Um, it's at a professional level that Ron and I always strived to be at, um, and it's just a better... Better focus.